Alright, hello everybody, this is Video Boy, and welcome to the GDX 2D Tutorial Part 11. So, today we're going to be adding asteroids to the game. We're going to be adding the spawning for them, uh, we're going to create the class for them, things like that. We're not actually going to add the destroying yet, with collision boxes with the bullets or uh, damaging the player. That stuff will be done in later episodes. Uh, but let's get started with actually adding the asteroids. So, uh, if you clone the git repository, there's going to be a new texture in the assets folder. You can get to there through the git also and just download it, you don't have to clone it. Um, so, this is it. It's an asteroid. It kind of looks like a ball of crap, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we can always change the textures later on and do other things. Uh, but we'll use this for now. When you're developing a game, you don't always want to get the best graphics right away unless you have someone dedicated to doing graphics. It's good to just do placeholder graphics, get the game logic running, and then fin do finishing touches on graphics and things like that later on. Okay, so let's actually start creating this class. So you want to go into the Entities package, do New, create a new class, and we'll call it an Asteroid. So if you guys remember the uh, the tutorial for bullets, the class is like a blueprint of an object. So we're going to create an asteroid blueprint. And it's actually going to be very similar to the bullet one. So uh, let's, whoops, let's open up the bullet class. Put it on the side like that because it's going to be very similar. There aren't going to be many changes. The main differences are that the asteroids are going to be going down. Um, and yeah, that's almost all actually, to be completely honest. The texture is different too. Uh, so let's actually just copy paste. Okay, we have to change the constructor so that it's asteroid. Okay, also, when we check here to see if the texture isn't loaded yet, uh, and we loaded the new texture, we need to change this so that it loads the asteroid instead of the bullet. And also, we're not going to need the default Y. I'll explain why in a second. So we can actually change this for width, because we're going to need that later. So it's basically just the width of the asteroid image, which is 16. Okay, so for the default Y, when the asteroids spawn, they're going to spawn at the top of the screen. So all we need to do is just set the Y by default to the top of the screen. So gdx.graphics.getHeight. You guys are probably used to us using this now in the tutorials. Uh, this is just a call to uh, get the graphics from libgdx. I mean the graphic height. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff too if you guys want to fiddle around with that. Okay, so we change this, we change that. Now for the Y, uh, we actually want the asteroid to be going down. So instead of adding to the Y, we subtract from it. That's basically it. Uh, we're also going to make the asteroid slower, so we'll set it to 250. Um, what else? Yes, the Y, instead of checking if it goes out of the screen from the top, we need to check if it goes out of the screen from the bottom. So the way we do this is, is the Y less than the negative of the uh, texture's height. Let's actually just create a constant here. Hold on. It's actually going to be 16 also, but might as well create it so, so we can read it better. Okay, so the reason for this, let's just load up the game. When the asteroid comes down to the bottom, if we just check if the zero, if the asteroid's Y is at zero, it's going to get deleted once the asteroid hits the bottom of the screen. But we want to do it when the asteroid leaves the screen. So when it's past here, so once the, uh, the Y is about here, and you don't see the asteroid at all anymore, then it gets deleted. But if we just said, if the Y is less than zero, it'll just get deleted here. But we need to check if it's less than the asteroid uh, zero. You can actually write zero minus height, but it's the same thing. Okay, so let's just close this. And that's actually pretty much all for this so far. Okay, so let's just close the bullet class. Now we need to make adjustments to the main game screen. Okay, so 
Uh, the way we're going to do this, we're not going to set a timer uh, like we do for uh, the roll switch or something, or like the shoot timer. It's not going to be something that's uh, like a final that's a constant. The timer for spawning asteroids is going to be random. So today in this episode we're going to be working with uh, the random object, which is something that's included in Java, and basically it allows you to randomly generate numbers. So that's pretty awesome. So we need to start by creating a timer to keep track of the time. So we'll call it asteroid spawn timer. Okay, and let's create two constants. So public static file float. All right, we're gonna call this one min time. Uh, here, let's call it. Uh, let's give it a full name. Asteroid spawn time. Set to zero point three. Uh, by the way, I don't know if I explained this in the past episode, but if you add F, you're casting it to a float. Uh, and you need to do that or else it gives you an error. So that's how you get rid of those errors, you put an F. So what this constant is going to do, it's going to be the minimum amount of time that the game has to wait until it spawns a new asteroid. And we're also going to create a maximum. And let's just set it to 0 0.6. So it needs to wait at least 0 0.3 seconds before spawning another asteroid, and maximum 0 0.6 seconds. Okay, so let's create the random object. So it's just like creating a new space game or a new asteroid or anything. It's not like number. It's called random. And you have to hover over it. Make sure you click the Java to util to import. Okay, so now let's um, here. Let's let's set the let's create the random object to start off. So let's initialize it. Random equals new random. This is an essential step, so don't forget to do that. And also let's set the spawn timer for when the game starts. So let's do asteroid spawn timer equals Okay, so now here, um, it's going to be a little confusing at first, but I'll explain it to you guys. So what you need to do is random dot next float. So it's going to get a random float. I'll explain to you in a little second. Times uh, max asteroid spawn time minus min asteroid spawn time plus min asteroid spawn time. So this looks kind of weird, right? So when you call random dot next float, random basically generates a float between 0 and 1 so it can be like 0 0.32 or 0 0.56 things like that so when you get this number it's going to basically be a fraction uh, of 1 it's not going to be uh, ex it's not uh, going to get to 1 and it could be a minimum of 0 so it's going to multiply that by the max time minus the min time uh, the reason why we're subtracting the min time is because if we just did the max time, just say this number ended up becoming 1, uh, it actually by some chance actually generated 1. Then if we do uh, this, so 1 times max time, it would be 0 0.6, and then at the end we add the minimum time, 0 0.3. So then actually the maximum would actually be 0 0.9. So we don't want that, so we want to subtract uh, the min time from it right away and then we add it back later once this calculation is done so that's basically how it works uh, also this uses orders of operations so it does the multiplication first once you get that number it adds min time to it so basically it's just getting uh, this generates a number from either 0 to 0 0.3 and then it adds 0 0.3 to it so it basically makes it so that 0 0.3 is the minimum value and 0 0.6 is the maximum value. We're going to use random again later, so we'll get some practice with it. Okay, so let's add the spawn code for the asteroids. So just like we do with other things, we need to subtract from the, from the timer. So asteroid 
spawn timer minus equals delta. So when we create the timer, we're setting it to a random number between 0 0.3 to 0 0.6. And now we're going to subtract from it. So now we need to check if asteroid timer is less than or equal to 0. So if asteroid timer gets less than or equal to 0 after being subtracted many times, uh, we basically need to reset it and then spawn a new asteroid. So we can just copy this code here to reset it. So it's going to create a new random number from 0 0.3 to 0 0.6. And let's add a new asteroid. So actually, I forgot to add the asteroids list. Let's create that array list asteroid asteroids. Okay, now let's initialize the list. That's what I'll do it here. Asteroids those new array list. Okay, so it's going to have to import asteroid. Alright, save it. And okay, so let's add a new asteroid to the asteroids list. Add. Okay, so add a new asteroid. Aster so we yeah, new asteroid. Alright, but now we're getting an error. You can't just call new asteroid because in the constructor we're asking for x value. So we need to assign an x value. So we're going to use random again to assign an x value so that an asteroid is spawned randomly along the width of the screen. So what we need to set it to, uh, we're going to use uh, random, we're not going to do next float. We're going to do next int uh, with a bound. So basically with a bound, this is the maximum possible value that it can be. Uh, and there's no minimum one right now, but there's ways around it, kind of like what we did before. Uh, so the max, the so it's going to spawn, it's going to create a random number from zero to this maximum number that we set. So what do we want that maximum number to be? Well, we want it to be the width of the screen so that it could be spawned anywhere in the width of the screen. But we also need to subtract the width of the asteroid. The reason for this, here I have no more bugs in the game so I can actually show you. Just say we didn't subtract the width of the asteroid. So like right now it's going to spawn from 0 to here. So if we didn't subtract this width, we can have asteroids with an x value of here and then they're going to be half showing on the screen. That doesn't look very good. But when they start at zero, they come here. You can see the whole asteroid. But we don't want to only see like half an asteroid on the screen. So that's why we subtract it. OK, so uh, now we added the code to spawn new asteroids. Now let's actually update the asteroids. Uh, so let's add a comment, asteroid spawn code update asteroids okay so we need to create a for each loop oh yes uh, we need to do like this also so let's create a new array list might as well just copy that be careful when you're copying code it's very easy to forget to change stuff and then that causes bugs I'm pretty sure one of my main causes for bugs is when I just copy code and I forget to change things properly so be careful with that Okay, so for each asteroid, asteroid in, uh, actually wrote in, asteroids, some languages actually use the keyword in, like C sharp. Okay, uh, asteroid dot update. Okay, we pass a delta time. All right, now similar to here, we need to check if the asteroid needs to be removed. Removed. So if asteroid.remove, asteroids to remove dot add. So we add the asteroid so it can be removed later. And then here call asteroids dot remove all asteroids to remove. Alright, sweet. So now let's add the rendering code and then we're pretty much gonna be done. So let's actually render the asteroids over the bullets. It'll just probably look better.
asteroids. Basically the same for loop, except we don't have to check to remove this time. Render, and then we pass game.batch. So that should pretty much do it. Let's try it out. And there you go. Asteroids are spawned randomly along the x-axis and they go to the bottom. Once they get to the bottom, they get removed. And they get spawned at random intervals of time too. We can actually play around with the interval if you guys want, just to prove that it actually works. So we can set the minimum one to 0 0.1 and the max will say like 10. Might as well. Click play. Alright, so it's taking quite a bit of time because the maximum time is 10. Alright, there you go. Oh, see? Pretty random. Now it's going to take long. So you guys get the point. So it actually works really well. So let's undo that. And that pretty much ends off today's uh, tutorial. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'd like to say, uh, I know I said in the devlog, but I'd like to say on the actual tutorial video, Sorry for being late last week. I actually finished the tutorial video last Friday. I was going to upload it on Saturday like usual, but I just completely forgot. Uh, so I uploaded it on Sunday. But um, yeah, so I'm sorry for that. But this week's tutorial is out early, as you guys can see. Uh, so I hope it's okay. And if you guys have questions, please leave them in the comments. And uh, also, if you have friends who want to learn game development, please uh, show this channel to them so that they can learn some game development. And please leave a like if you like the video and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.